Hey, my name is Tucker Krause, and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I thought I'd add a new series to the channel that would basically be a weekly news update, maybe gathering some news stories that you haven't seen before. Of course, I'm not saying I'm gonna just be getting random obscure ones just to guarantee you've never seen them. You've probably already seen some of the news in here, but maybe there's a few things you haven't that you might be able to find out about. That's kind of the whole idea here, though either way, this is not financial advice. Make sure to do your own research, and I'll note in advance, all my sources are linked in the description. Alright, so the USA seeks to buy $4.3 billion of domestically enriched uranium. That shows that the supply situation is starting to hit the utilities, and equities did fly 10-20% to on the news, but have since given back their gains. And I'm sure, you know, you saw that in your portfolio this week if you're someone who holds uranium stocks. And so... This is of course going to be extra bullish for, I believe, Cameco because they're the only one in the US that actually has an enrichment facility, if I remember correctly, though fact check me if I'm wrong. As well as for companies like Centris and Silix, as well as really for any US-based uranium company, though of course, it's bullish for the whole space, these are just some of the ones that might benefit directly. I should also note this hasn't gone through Congress yet, so this isn't yet a done deal. Alright, so it seems we could potentially be seeing some oil demand destruction beginning. Since the start of March, gasoline consumption is 6% lower than the same period in 2019, and May 2021 had 2% higher demand than May 2022. And gasoline national average is now over $5 per gallon in the USA, so this is pretty interesting here. If people are beginning to not be able to afford basic necessities like gasoline, just imagine all the excess goods they're no longer buying, like luxury electric vehicles, treadmills with built-in iPads, or, you know, investing into those overvalued stocks. So, of course, all of that, if they're no longer able to, you know, do all this extra discretionary spending because of the fact that they can barely even afford gasoline anymore, you know, for, the re for most people, that's, of course, not going to be a good thing. Especially, of course, if we do see gasoline continue to rise and perhaps this demand gets destroyed more and more because even more people begin to get hit harder. And also, I should note here, I'm not bearish on oil. This is just something that's quite interesting to me that we're already seeing this. Alright, so jobless claims rise. So you can see on this chart here that weekly jobless initial claims are at about the highest since about January this year, though still way off the COVID highs. So either way, it's still not a good sign that it's increasing, especially on the back of high inflation, because that of course means stagflation. Though of course, like I just said, at least it's not as high as the COVID highs. So we'll have to watch this, see if it continues to rise or not. That, of course, isn't going to be a good thing if we start to see, you know, high inflation, jobless claims rising, and these insanely high gas prices that are forcing people to not be able to spend money on other things. All right, so to lighten back up, URNM is now on the ASX, as we can see from this tweet from John Quakes here. And though, although I should note, it's not actually the URNM that's ran by Sprott. It's actually a different company, but they're just using the same ticker on the Australian Stock Exchange. So, of course, that's going to be great for marketing purposes, though I should note I actually looked into it. Its holdings are different than Sprott's URNM. Either way, this is probably great news for Australian investors and Aussie U stocks in general because, you know, now more institutional money can enter there, which is, you know, a great sign. And, you know, that's just great in general. Right, as he notes right here, just a flywheel effect. Consumer confidence collapses to all-time lows. As interest rates rise and inflation continues to rise, this could get even worse. As we can see right here, it's lower than 2008, lower than the March 2020 COVID crash, lower than anything. So, of course, that's not a good sign at all, especially when you consider, you can see that the recessions are darkened here, and you can see most of the time when it gets really low, it's in a recession, or there's right about to be one. May's CPI reading is the highest since 1981, as we can see in this chart down here from Yahoo Finance. It started to come tick down in April, though it started to shoot back up in May, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to shoot back up this June, considering the fact just how much oil's risen in the, you know, first 10-11 days here of June. Because I'm sure you've all seen anecdotal evidence that people are struggling with this high inflation. So if it continues to advance, of course, that's only going to get worse, just as we saw in the previous slide with very, very low consumer confidence. So the numbers themselves, it's 8.6% year over year versus 8.3% expected and 8.3% in April. And it's 1% month over month versus 0.3% in April. And the core CPI is 6% year over year versus 5.9% expected. Of course, went way past all the expectations, went way up further than April. Not a great sign for the economy at all. And so, of course, because of that, people are now expecting that we could be getting further rate hikes. As we can see here, traders price 50% chance of 75 basis point Fed hike in July. Goldman, 
make core CPI rose by 0.63% month over month, well above consensus, and the fastest pace since last June. We now expect the Fed to hike the funds rate by 50 basis points in September versus 25 basis points previously, in addition to 50 basis points moves in June and July. And so, of course, high inflation is bad for the economy, high interest rates are too, because high interest rates, of course, well, yes, that can in some ways reduce inflation slightly by taking money out of the money supply, there's also the issue that you're raising the cost of capital. So, you know, we're getting high inflation, interest rates are rising, we have initial jobless claims rising, we have consumer confidence at all-time lows, and if they're starting to be people who can't even afford gas, it's not good, it's not good at all. So, you know, comment down below, what do you guys think of all this? You know, do you see us heading to recession? Are we already in one? What do you think? What do you make of all this news? And of course, let me know if you think I should continue this little series. And I've got to kill these like five mosquitoes that are all hovering around me. So thanks for watching. This is not financial advice. Do your own research and I will see you next time.